Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dentists with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how much should a dentist get for continuing education from their employer on an annual basis. So if you are an employee of a practice, they're going to offer you, or at least they should, offer you a bunch of benefits. And so that will include you know, health, vision, dental, retirement, disability, life, and then they're going to pay for your licensing uh, dues, DEA registration, um, and then they'll also, or at least they should, offer some kind of reimbursement amount for your continuing education costs uh, that you have each year. So I would say a normal amount for a dentist would be somewhere between two to $3,000 a year. The employer would either reimburse you or just straight up pay for the costs associated with that. And so what things can you pay for? Well, if you have to travel to the conference, the travel costs, so airfare, um, you know, car rental, the price of admission to the conference, lodging, some will pay for meals as well. Um, so <clears throat> that is a normal amount. Now, I find many dental practices, especially the corporate practices, um, really try to lowball the dentist on the amount that they're going to pay for continuing education. Uh, I mean, I see like 500 to 1,000 sometimes. That is not, uh, I would consider, reasonable. And you should certainly ask for more, you know, prior to signing your employment agreement. Uh, you know, when you are offered an employment contract, you need to kind of look at it in totality. Is the compensation good? Is the non-compete reasonable? How long is the contract? How can I get out of it? Uh, and then also, what are some of the benefits that they're offering? And although, you know, two or 3,000 a year isn't going to break the bank, it's still something that the average employer would pay for. And so in that scenario, if you were entertaining a job where they didn't offer any kind of reimbursement for that, well, not only is that kind of not industry standard, but then you also have to think, all right, what type of employer is this? I find that the employers that kind of cut corners as far as compensating the dentist or offering ancillary benefits are maybe not the greatest employers to work for. I, I mean, I, it doesn't necessarily mean that the owner of the practice is cheap, but if 90 per, you know, percent of your colleagues are getting 2000, at least 2000 for continuing education on an annual basis, and your employer is saying, we're not gonna pay for anything, well, that, that might indicate that they are either semi-difficult to work with or trying to, completely skew the employment contract towards the employer or potentially cheap. If they want to cut corners with that, what else are they going to cut corners with? You know, it could be other things as well. Now, if you want to negotiate this amount, you just have to ask for it. So normally what would happen is you get an employment contract, you'd look it over and then you'd make kind of a list of things that you wanted amended. Then you'd provide that uh, list to the employer and then specifically ask for, I would like, you know, X amount for continuing education. Um, and then there could be some negotiating back and forth. Now, any dentist is going to have to kind of make a priority list of things that are important to them. So if the not compete, if maybe the compensation percentage, if you're on productivity under like a net collections contract, um, if those things are more important to you, then you may need to weigh, all right, is it worth asking for 2000 for continuing education if I want you know, a $20,000 signing bonus or, or whatever. The, there is a point, and I, it's not black and white, but there is a point in the contract negotiation where you can just ask for too many things and it looks like you are either kind of greedy or trying to get one over on the employer. Um, just from doing this for decades, I can kind of intrinsically understand where that point is. But... If you just ask for a bunch of unreasonable things, it could go the opposite way. And the employer could think, you know what? I don't know if this is an employee I want to work with. They're just asking for so many different things uh, and they're being very unreasonable. And that might be a bad sign with working with the dentist in the future. So it kind of goes both ways. So that's how much continuing education costs, or at least the average amount a dentist would receive per year from an employer. 
if you have any questions about your employment agreement, feel free to contact my law firm at the phone number listed below in the description, uh, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. We uh, release videos every single day, and I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you.